Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and XRP refuses to properly crash. It's been running from 50 cents all the way up to $2, and yeah, there's been some pullbacks along the way, fine, but there's been nothing intensely dramatic in terms of downward price action since this has all begun. Uh, now, th to be clear... <laughs> I, I don't think that will persist. That is not possible. It's just rather exciting and impressive that we haven't seen an insane pullback to this point, running all the way up to over $2. Damn, son. I mean, XRP over the last 24 hours, it's down less than 1%, and it's been a little volatile, fine. But even if you look at uh, XRP's recent high of, of over $2, I think it was $2.02 .02 according to Live Coinwatch, as I record this, it's down, what, like 7%? That's nothing in crypto. <laughs> you know, check back in a minute and a half from now. You know, it's, it's nothing. Um, so, so it's interesting. And so in this video, I want to share with you a number of thoughts having to do with directionally what might be likely uh, in the short term and the long term. And especially for all of the new people to crypto and to the XRP community who are not used to the volatility of XRP and crypto in general. Got a few things I want to share with you. But uh, before I go any further... I do want to be clear here that I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos as a fun hobby. That's all that's going on here. Uh, as I record this, XRP is at $1.84, Bitcoin at $62,866, uh, market cap for the asset class $2,246,000,000,000. dollars and Bitcoin dominance continuing to decline, and I to, to dec decline to decline, and I do love seeing that. It's a 52.29 percent, and as alts continue to rally, you will keep on seeing that. But I'm not saying there won't be a, an increase in Bitcoin dominance necessarily at any point in, for the duration of this market cycle. There, there very well may be. Uh, not the least of which, in terms of uh, you know reasons on a list, would be Bitcoin's not done running this this uh, for this particular market cycle. I, I don't think anyway. Uh, my opinion is that we're nowhere near the, the top. Even if the top's 80,000, like, we're still nowhere near that. We're at 62,867 now, as so I record. Like, th there's a lot more room to run. And yeah, I understand in terms of the opportunity and in investing in Bitcoin for this market cycle, the vast majority of it's already been realized, of course. You know, if you bought for 3,000 and something dollars in March of last year, yeah, it's looking pretty good right about now. But uh, what's it going to go? Even if it goes to 120,000, that's only about a two-fold increase from where we're at right now. So in terms of the multiplier effect, the opportunity, most of it in Bitcoin is, is gone to this point, even though it continues to lead the market. Um, and it's been interesting, too, actually. Let me mention this. I'd be remiss if I didn't cite this. Today, Coinbase is publicly listed. Uh, so there's this article from Cointelegraph Bitcoin price drops to near $61,000 shortly after coin lists on NASDAQ. So it is cool, first of all, to see Coinbase, whatever you think about that particular cryptocurrency exchange, very cool to see them being publicly traded. And as far as the price action for Bitcoin, you know what this looks like to me? It looks to me like a buy the rumor, sell the news type of situation. The, 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 the price of Bitcoin ran up. And so people were anticipating this. So if the, the anticipation is that Bitcoin's going to run up in, you know, the day that uh, Bitcoin launches, people uh, hearing that narrative in anticipation of that purchase, uh, they, they, they're purchasing that. And then when it uh, comes time for Bitcoin to allegedly explode, that's when the, instead you see a sell off. And you see this in Bitcoin. You've seen it in, uh, in XRP. Uh, my favorite example of that in XRP was uh, th there was a rumor, which ended up being true, that uh, Ripple's uh, on-demand liquidity product was going to be launched. At the time, it was known as XRapid. It was rebranded from XRapid to on-demand liquidity. And so uh, the rumor broke out. It was probably, I guess it was probably early September 2018. And so the price of XRP started pumping. I mean, it, and it went up dramatically. I mean, I, I don't know if a candle closed on this, but I think XRP went from maybe the upper 20 cent region to maybe over 70 cents or something like that. I have to look at a chart to be sure. But it, whatever happened, it was it was a pretty reason, pretty big pump, especially considering we were in a bear market. But then when the news broke that uh, by Ripple, that uh, yeah, X Rapid was live, the price just tanked. It just went down. It's a buy the rumor, sell the news thing. So I, I think you probably did see that here. Uh, it was an easy one probably to call. Uh, and, and so Bitcoin price tanked, XRP went down with it, went down in tandem. 
Uh, but but it, it, you know it seems to be holding support and I'll be talking about that in just a moment too but it's most important support level for, considering where it is now it seems to be holding at least to uh, according to at least one chart analyst here but for everybody that's new to new to crypto and XRP specifically and I know there are a lot of you out there listening uh, ch check this out and even if you're here like this will be a good reminder even if you've been in crypto for some time now but I, I tweeted out the following earlier today to the new XRP holders out there, either XRP will rocket in price like it did in 2017, or it won't. In my humble opinion, all of the price action in between won't matter. If you're freaked out about price pullbacks, zoom out. And so part of the reason that I was talking about is that is um, XRP at the time I wrote that was dropping a bit. It was probably pretty close to uh, where it bottomed out today. What did it get, what did it get down to? Let's see, a buck sixty-five. Yeah, so it got down to about a buck sixty-five, and now as I record this, it's a, it's at a buck eighty-three. So it did come up, and then a little bit back down. It got back up to as high as a one dollar ninety-two cents. So none of this to me for crypto. This is not that volatile. For you know, like if this, you're talking about stocks, this would be outrageous. But for the crypto asset class, this is looking pretty tame to me right here. Still, I know a lot of people aren't particularly used to this, and so even seeing it at one sixty-five, I didn't know if it was going to keep going or not. And it ends up, at least to this point, um, it has not continued to slide down. Now, you are future people. I don't know how far in the future you're watching this video, but uh, maybe maybe it, maybe it finally does tank. Fine. Well, it's going to happen at some point. I'm not predicting that it's going to happen. No, I'm just saying at some point, yeah, of course there's going to be a major pullback. Um, it's, it's also exciting me to think, though, that, you know, we could hit the previous all-time high, and it could just hang out there for all I know, for months before we see the, the major blow off top. Because consider this, if you wanna take a look at historical price action, XRP started the last bull cycle at about half a penny. So if you look at January, 2017, it was about half a penny. Months later, it had its biggest run up in history. It was, uh, I can't remember if it was April, it could have been maybe early May, it was somewhere there about. XRP ran all the way up to a little over 40 cents. And then it did have a major retracement, but think about that. It had been on the market for what, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, several years and, and more or less bouncing around half a penny. I think I got up to at one point like six cents and then it crashed back down. So this was unheard of for it to go from half a penny to 40 cents, but it, it crashed back down and it mostly traded around 15 or 20 cents for most of the rest of the year until mid-December when it ran up to almost $4. And so the reason I wanted to cite that is what if we do see a major run-up where we get to back to the all-time high or maybe a bit higher? And and as exciting as that would be, and as as, as, as much as it uh, would be the case that a lot of people uh, have life-changing wealth, even at those levels, there will be people that start to seriously have life-changing wealth even at those levels. It's just interesting to think that uh, you know, it could trade sideways for some time around that new incredible level before really blasting off to some of these levels that a lot of chart analysts are talking about, like blockchain backers says 10 to $13 is what we should be looking for this market cycle, or tw t uh, 20 to $30 if you're talking about what uh, other analysts are expecting, like uh, Credible Crypto and Leb Crypto and DIY Investing, just to name a few off the top of my head. Uh, it's, it's just interesting to think that we're in a whole new realm because there's so much more money pumping in. So whereas uh, whereas 40 cents, you know, used to be the most wild price action you ex you could expect for XRP, uh, now it's more like uh, what about that that all time high of you know close to four dollars. So I won't be surprised in the least if we see that at some point because XRP has had not much trouble getting up to even just the $2 range, proving that it's just moving with the rest of the market. And if it's going to continue to move with the rest of the market, which I do anticipate, well, look at how the other coins like behave. Like what about Ethereum? You know, its previous all-time high, I'm going from memory, it might have been like $1,400 or $1,500 for the last market cycle. It's currently at $2,400. So what if we see something like that with, with XRP? You know, what's it, what's it going to be looking like? Is it going to just hover around four bucks? Is it going to hover around maybe six or seven dollars before it moves up the rest of the way? We're just going to have to sit tight and see, but it's just fascinating and exciting, I think, to know like that, that's the, the type of stuff that we can realistically be uh, contemplating here. And I, I also wrote the following here. Uh, <laughs> And this is this is why and, and as as I read this, this is this is a tweet. It's because my tweet that I read you. This is actually it was that was the first part of two. As I read this second part though, keep in mind that I, I chuckle about this sometimes. I do like I am right now. 
there are people that have just jumped into XRP. They purchased it and it goes down like seven or 15 percent and and they're panic selling. Like people are actually doing that. And so like how long have they held XRP then? Like, is it been a full week? And so keep that in mind as I read what I'm about to read to you. And it is as follows. I wrote, I wrote XRP from 21 cents to almost $4 down to 11 cents back up to where it is today with an almost endless number of scary pullbacks like this along the way for three plus years. Emotionally responding to such price activity is a horrible idea to me personally, just my two cents. And so there were, and it's true, there were so many pullbacks along the way. And if, if I were um, an emotional person, or, and I didn't know what was going on, and I didn't understand how much market psychology is at play in terms of the price going up and down, and it ultimately doesn't matter, uh, I could have panic sold at any of those those um, any of the, those little forks in the road, if you want to call them that. There's there were there was no shortage of opportunity for me to emotionally respond. And so it's just fascinating to see that I just chose to not respond because I know that people that emotionally respond, the data shows they get wrecked. So I just didn't behave like that. I decided I'm not going to behave like that. And uh, so now I've been, been holding for three plus years. And it's just interesting seeing people that haven't learned that yet. And it doesn't mean they're stupid or anything like that, not necessarily. They just might not have that data. Or, or even if they're smart, some people are just going to emotionally respond no matter what data is presented to them. And it's, it's not logical. Logic and smartness, two different things, to be clear. And uh, and so there are people that have held XRP for like a week or whatever it's been for them. And then they're just like, oh, my gosh. And then the, <laughs> this guy's got to go lower. And then they panic sell. And it's just fascinating. So that's why for me, it's just it's just worth making yourself aware of how humans behave in these market cycles. Then you decide if you want to behave like the crowd, which is usually wrong, or if you don't want to behave like the crowd. And that's, that's why there's that... Uh, that saying be fearful is from warren buffett be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful you know the, the majority is wrong the vast majority of the time it's just the case um and so then uh there was this also uh there's a an individual within the community named alex who responded to that responded to me and wrote it would be completely normal for a correction uh to 75 cents to one dollar that's what happened in 2017 and i expect the same again well i'll agree with uh, with the concept of that which is, is certainly that you can see massive pullbacks like that and that's not some sort of indication to me that the party's over for xrp i, I think that we haven't even hit anywhere near the euphoria stage of crypto so i think there's a lot 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 higher to go for the entire crypto asset class including xrp uh, as far as those levels, I'm not a chart analyst, so I can't really speak to that. And I haven't really seen, seen a chart analyst that I'm following talk about those levels. Um, but if they did happen, yeah, I agree with Alex that it wouldn't be something that's bonkers to me. And then uh, somebody named Ryan, Writing the Wave came in, and I think this was a, a nice little sarcastic comment that I like, though. Wrote, because uh, this bull run lacks utility and adoption like in 2017. So he seemed a little skeptical that we could see those levels. Um, I'm not as skeptical about that, but I do appreciate the sarcasm there. <laughs> and so I wrote in response to that, though. Uh, there is definitely more utility and adoption with XRP and crypto in general. Uh, but I think it's pretty clear that the typical retail speculator doesn't really care. They're not buying slash selling based on fundamentals. They're buying slash selling as a result of human psychology. And I do firmly believe that. And I and I understood that even years ago, but um, the degree to which that's become ingrained in me and how strongly I believe it, uh, it's just increased as I've just observed humans being humans. Like, it, it really is the case. Like Fundamentals mean almost nothing, which is interesting to someone like me. Like I, I got into XRP because the fundamentals mattered so much to me. I was looking for a cryptocurrency that actually did something. And I do still insist that matters for long-term viability. And uh, perhaps you care about the fundamentals as well. So there are some that do. That, I'm not, de not denying, like, I'm not saying there are zero humans that care about fundamentals. What I'm saying is that the typical retail speculator doesn't know what the hell they're doing, and that's not what drives the market. There are people like you and me that uh, that buy based on fundamentals, perhaps, and that does enough to prop it up. But in terms of the wild price action, it's all the rest of the idiots out there that don't know what the hell they're doing, emotionally buying and selling, FOMOing in, jumping off of a cliff like lemming after lemming, you know, when it's time to panic sell. <laughs> so that's the way that I look at it. And then Alex wrote uh, back to me and said, yes, exactly. And people don't change. That's why charts have repetition. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. And so the, the, the charts, the reason that you see repetition in charts is because 
humans, you know, for, for as diverse as we are with our DNA, like we're set to operate within certain parameters. It might be reasonable, say, res resulting in this repetition that you see from the charts. It's not about fundamentals. There's a reason that chart analysts see um, the same chart patterns play out over and over and over again. Humans are just little biological robots, basically. And uh, even though all this knowledge is out there about how humans behave, and you, you can like be like Moon Lambo and uh, take in that information and then uh, you know use it to your advantage, most people don't. Most people just don't do that for whatever reason. It's an interesting topic to talk about, but people just aren't doing it. Uh, now, here's a tweet uh, from chart analyst Love Crypto, uh, who responded to what I wrote there, and he said, Yes, please hodl if you're new. Don't get chopped out. My content is geared towards day and swing traders. You'll likely lose a lot of money trading the swings and getting emotionally involved, rather than zooming out and focusing on a long-term investment. Thanks, mate, for pointing this out. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, that's that's like, for, for me... You know, one of the few things I can control is whether or not I buy and sell. And so rather than, you know, FOMO in and panic sell, rather than trying to time the markets, you know, if I think that XRP is going to go down. Because there have been a ton of times where I thought XRP was going to go down. And the vast majority of the time it did go down. So all of those times I, I could have sold and then bought back in. But the one time I'm wrong and it takes off and it goes up thousands of percent, then I'm wrecked. And so I'm not willing to take on that risk exposure. And for me, like the one thing I can control is that. And so just sitting there doing nothing makes a ton of sense to me. I control that. And this is just about the only thing that I can control, which is why I keep saying that my bigger bet, it's, it's, it's on this idea of whether or not we're going to see parabolic price activity in line uh, tr structurally like what we saw in 2017 or are we not? My bet is that we are. And so everything that happens in between doesn't matter. That's my bet. Uh, it hasn't come to fruition yet. It's been neat seeing XRP get up to the $2 plus range. Very exciting. I admit that, of course. But I'm still waiting to see what I'm betting on actually play out, which would be all-time high and then price discovery again. And, and we'll see how high it goes. But I'm, I'm betting that same chart structure that happened last cycle where it went parabolic. I'm willing to bet that's going to happen again. And so I'm not going to worry about timing markets or anything like that. I'm not going to worry about the, like the missed opportunity of ha having been an invested in XRP for so long while it mostly traded sideways. This and that. No, no, no. That's not what I do. You know, I, I'm diversified. I'm not worried about that anyway. Uh, but I think a lot of people have trouble with that, so I wanted to mention it. Uh, as far as what to expect here, um, actually, I'll mention what time it is. So it is, what the hell day is it? Is it Wednesday today? I don't know. All the days blur together now. Is it Wednesday the 14th, I want to say? Yeah, it is. Wednesday the 14th. Um, I'm in the United States uh, in the Midwest, Central Standard Time. It is 9.29 p.m. as I record this. And so about 12 hours ago, chart analyst Love Crypto wrote the following. Many asking me, here is what I'm looking now, looking for now if XRP loses $1.70 support. If $1.70 holds today, XRP will likely, quite likely, head to $2 plus this week. And, uh, and then he wrote, expecting one more leg down or so over the next four to six hours unless price reclaims and closes above $1.79. And again, as I record this, it's at a buck eighty-two, so it's looking pretty good right about now. So uh, maybe it's more likely than not that you actually will see XRP above two dollars rather than some sort of major correction right now. Uh, here's a, a um, another analyst, very popular chart analyst within the XRP community, Harry, who is at Geraldo XRP, wrote. XRP fans, make no mistake, $1.96 is the toughest level in the XRP chart. Lots of traders just took half off or covered longs, shorted, etc. It's still getting bought. And that has been, it's so amazing, just as there have been little price dumps along the way, on the way up to $2 for XRP, just every time you start to see a little bit of a sell-off, tremendous volume comes in and just snatches it all off. So there's all sorts of traders, yeah, like Harry said, that, uh, you know, they, they took half off or covered longs, shorted, etc. Sure. And then buyers just come in. It's, it's just been in, insane. Um, I, I just, it, it's not like it's um, completely surprising just because it's crypto, but man, it's just impressive to see every time something like this happens. It just is. And it's, it's, it's incredibly exciting when you've got skin in the game because we are not done yet, folks. I think that the, this is my opinion. My unprofessional opinion, this is not financial advice, but I firmly believe that XRP is going to go substantially higher, even if we see major pullbacks along the way. I don't care. I'm going to keep sticking it out 
Because, again, my bet hasn't changed. My bet from November 2017 that I made with myself, it's still intact. has not changed. Either it goes up um, you know, substantially or it doesn't. Um, and then here's a, t- a tweet from chart analyst DIY Investing. I like this. He wrote, I think coin listing, so that's the Coinbase listing, uh, which is, its ticker symbol is coin, C-O-I-N. Uh, I think this coin listing is the beginning of media attention in the market cycle. Yes, we are still early. So what are we talking about here? Well, here's a little screen grab in case you care to take a look. Uh, this he, he's, he's uh, show, this is the same as the, the Wall Street cheat sheet. You may have seen that. That's the, the chart that's more popular. This is the same thing, effectively, though. It's, it's just a chart indicating market psychology. And so he thinks that in terms of the market cycle, structurally, and this is what you will see again. I firmly believe this. Uh, just the, the, again, the same chart patterns keep playing out over and over and over again because we're just little biological robots that keep, you know, get, get a big enough group, we're more or less going to behave the same. Like, it, it, it's just every single time. You get cycle after cycle after cycle. And so, um, you know, here's where he thinks we're at, media attention. So nowhere near the top. Nowhere near the top of this market cycle. There's a lot more to go in terms of dollars flowing in, which which to me is something that's exciting. Uh, somebody named Dylan responded to DOI Investing, though, and wrote, I personally think we're closer to greed than anything. And so you can see greed here would be much closer to the top. Um, I personally don't agree with that, and neither does DIY Investing, who wrote the following. As someone who's been here since early 2016, this is nothing close to greed. Hard to believe, but Ethereum literally just broke all-time highs, bro. And indeed, it did the other day just broke break another uh, all-time high. I think it was yesterday. I don't know if it did today. Um, but uh, interesting stuff here. So to me, it's just been so exciting. There's so much opportunity out there. This is the most fun I've ever had being in crypto, and I've been here since November 2017. Um, that shouldn't be too surprising, um, even though I went at I went through the last market cycle, I had a lot more time to accumulate, so this is a, a much better cycle for me, and I think that XRP is going to go much higher than it did last market cycle. So I know we're just hovering close to two dollars as I record this, but man, as look as fun as the bear market was, and I do genuinely mean that because I wasn't emotionally responding. Like I had a good time in the bear market, accumulating and tracking stuff. A lot of people were miserable. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't mean fine. I mean, it was it was fine for me, all right? That's what matters. It was fine for me, all right? Uh, so despite the fact that that was the case, like, I, I was just having fun accumulating and, and, you know, running my YouTube channel, all this stuff. But, yeah, this is a lot more fun. It's because I'm still doing all that stuff, but the prices are going up with the stuff that I own and in a major way. Like, my, my net worth has gone up substantially very recently. And I'll tell you what, I know what I hate, and I don't hate that. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.